So I can put on these, these funny little shoes and actually walk around the chairs. Um, maybe we want to do that with the camera afterwards. Um, you can walk around the chair, you can look underneath, and if you, and you, you don't need to teach anyone how to use the system in that way, because you, they put these glasses on and they walk around. There's no uh, knowledge needed about how do I navigate in the model, uh, how do I interact with the model, you just do it naturally. CAVE, I think it's actually an abbreviation, Computer Automated Virtual Environment, that's it. You have an environment, if you wish, uh, made out of projection screens where you can immerse yourself into a virtual world. Um, you can do the same thing with HMDs, with head-mounted displays, where you have the screens directly in front of your eyes. But that has some disadvantages. You don't see yourself, you don't see your environment, um, you stumble over things if you walk. Um, so we're doing this. Right now you're not seeing much of it. You have the screen of a 3D cinema, in this case fourfold. <laughs> so you have a room that's made up of uh, projection screens and you have um, 3D stereo projection. And um, what these glasses do is they're basically, the glasses themselves are basically the same as you would have them in, um, in 3D cinema, but they're tracked. That's why they have these little funny balls on them. And the cameras that you have on the top of the screen and uh, also two at the bottom, they tell the computer where the tracking target is. And that way, in real time, the perspective from which you see the environment is perfectly adapted to these glasses. So uh, if I walk through here, I always have the perfect perspective and it feels like reality. That's why it's called virtual reality. So if I put that near this camera... That might actually be a cool effect if you uh, walk around like that. One thing, you're walking on a projection screen, that's fine. If your shoes are halfway clean, <laughs> you're, we're, we're fine with that. Uh, but we had people scratch the floor. Hence, the beautiful row of slippers. <laughs> exactly. I'll turn the 3D off. Now you have a single picture. And if I turn 3D on again, you'll see that the further away the object is, the further apart are two pictures and um, obviously that's the 3D stereo effect that you have a picture for the left eye and a picture for the right eye which gives you the depth cue. So this is the representation of the building we're in? Yeah, it's a building we're in. I'll give you these again. Mm -hmm. So so the view's perfect for the camera. So I can not only move in front of the building here, obviously I can fly through, um, through the whole model and I use this funny little fly stick for it. It works the same way as the glasses do. We have a tracking target on them. And um, so I'm doing kind of a Superman move. I'm just pointing where I want to fly. And that way I can fly through the model. Sure. I'll give you something to look at here. So I'll fly into the building. So now we're inside the building. And this model of this building has existed when here, in reality, there was still green field. So we could be walking through our labs. Uh, we were able to look at our offices, um, to look at all the facilities bef long before they were even built. So we could tell the architects, OK, this is fine, but we want uh, this to be different. Um, so we had a virtual prototype of this building long before the building existed. And with this prototype, we could make corrections that at a later point in time would have been very expensive. Um, to correct the virtual model was easy and cheap. To correct the actual construction <laughs> would have been a lot harder and a lot more expensive. Um, and also, during the building process, there were some, uh, some difficulties uh, that we could cure um, with the help of virtual reality. If you look, for example, at this staircase, we're looking at a staircase from the bottom, and it has kind of a funny, weird geometry to it. It has this twisted geometry. And the people who were supposed to make the concrete for this, they had 2D paper plans. So we took them to our old virtual reality um, lab, and they looked at it in 3D in virtual reality, walked through the building, looked at the, at the staircase like we are doing right now, and uh, within 10 minutes they, they knew what to do and they understood. That principle is what we are promoting here. We look at virtual models, virtual prototypes first, see whether we can see any mistakes, 
get new ideas, uh, correct it virtually first, look at it again, and when we feel confident uh, to build the actual real prototype, then we do it. I can actually show you again what the, what the tracking does. Um, so we'll fly into this room over here. You can walk around the chair, you can look underneath, and you don't need to teach anyone how to use the system in that way because you, they put these glasses on and they walk around. There's no uh, knowledge needed about how do I navigate in the model, uh, how do I interact with the model, you just do it naturally. If you imagine to have not a chair here, but maybe um, a prototype of the latest machine of some company, then you can imagine engineers walking around the machine like that and discussing about the machine. I was telling you earlier about the six-sided cave we had. If you imagine a full cube of projection walls, that's quite a cool experience to be in there because you're fully surrounded by virtual reality. You're moving through, virtu to, through a virtual world. You don't even see the real world anymore. You're fully immersed. Um, and it's actually so, so real that you move within the six-sided cave for about two minutes, you will forget this, the projection wall that you can actually open. You won't know where to go anymore. <laughs> we, we actually needed a, a system to make sure that people find their way out. You could push every wall and the right wall would beep and then would open um, because people would get lost. Um, the disadvantage of that is that first of all the light is on, you only have light from the projectors in a six-sided cave. So if you're in there with two people, people look kind of weird. They have like this funny dark, they're, they're kind of a dark shade of, them, of themselves. So um, if you have engineers who actually want to work in that system, it's quite a weird experience. And also, they're completely in virtual reality. If they want to have a table to take notes, if they want to you know, go back to a meeting situation, they can't. And this is why we designed this cave the way we did, by First of all, having a large power wall where you can have large models, but also having kind of an open layout with a meeting, um, a meeting room right there. Go back and forth, actually, from virtual to normal reality. Do you want to see the, the, the back of things, like the, the yeah, technical yeah. stuff? This is only the projectors. The uh, computers, there's 13 of them, uh, are downstairs. They're not actually not very special computers. They're uh, normal com uh, uh, consumer computers yeah. that you can buy. They just have really, really good graphic cards and um, two of them each. And um, what, what sort of thing are they running? Just like gaming cards, or yeah, very good gaming cards. That's that's basically what it is. Um, and as you can tell, these are not your normal office projectors either. They're quite big, quite expensive. They actually use a lot of electricity. The only reason we have the mirrors is so we don't need, need as much room. If you point the projectors normally at the projection wall, you'd have to turn them the right way. Just by turning them 90 degrees and have these mirrors, you just save some room. Because we want good resolution, we have four projectors on this wall. You could nowadays also use one 4K projector if you wanted, but that again would use up a lot more room because that would have to be further back again. The floor is done from above. You could also do the floor from below. Yeah. We've done that before. That again uses a lot more room. You need another story actually down, uh, yeah, downstairs. So overall we have 11 projectors here. Four for this big wall. And if you come around here, yeah, sorry. There's uh, two more over here and then two more again on the, on the short side there. It actually uses the heat to feed the heating system. That way we don't have to feel that bad for using up all this energy. A couple of years ago, you would do everything to get as much light onto the projection wall as possible. And what we're doing here is actually a lot of things that use up light. The first thing after the lens is this filter over here and you can see the, the dark uh, border and you have that dark border to stitch together the pictures of the four different projectors in a way that they fade in into each other nicely. And, but that uses light, that makes everything a little darker. And then we have a projection wall that's also almost black which uses up light again and like I said, a couple of years ago, people would have said, this is crazy. You can't, you can't just take away light. We need as much light as we can get. 
Nowadays, the projectors are so strong that we can afford to have uh, black projection walls because these, again, um, make your contrast a lot better. You have sharper contrast and better individual pixels. This is a normal uh, full HD solution, so, so 1920 by 1080. Um, so the whole wall is uh, almost a 4K resolution. I can tell you that the whole system, the way it's built here, was uh, about 1.2 million euros. Does it ever go wrong? Sometimes it does go wrong, but uh, compared to systems we had earlier, this is really nice and stable. <laughs> what we're using right now here mainly is our own software. So if you have a computer game, they're usually not capable in a real-time system with more than one uh, visual channel. And these, this is 11 visual channels. Um, so that's quite a step, actually. Um, but like I said, we're working on making Unity work uh, for that. Unity 3D is uh, a game engine. Within a couple of months, I think, we'll, we'll be there. So there could be computer games developed for, for this system, which would be great fun. Everything about Two that to the power is, has led me to be the scientist that I have been. My brain's Times telling three. me I know three that there is go. nothing here. So that's going to be zero. And if we run those values through again, three. zero, one, minutes one, to work zero. out that value. 